Head coach Gino Tamari after Miami's first weekend sweep over Florida State since 2001. Gino, if you can please start with an opening statement and then we'll go into questions. That was my opening statement. That's a long time. That's 22 years. So that's a. I remember that year. I think we won a national championship that year, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it, it just, uh, you know, what sticks, sticks out in my mind right now is when I asked Josh, is I can't recall the last time we had three starters. Uh, two of them pitched eight innings, the other pitched into the eighth. So all three guys pitched into the eighth uh, or through it. Um, I mean, we talk about pitchers being efficient. Boy, we got the, that's the three best starts I can recall here. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't recall, a co even, a, you know, back in Coach Morris's year, if we had a pit, three starters go that far. But it definitely, they set the tone for the week. And even Alejandro that had the hiccup in the fourth inning, uh, he settled in after that triple to retire the next 14 batters, I believe you said. And uh, maybe the big, one of the bigger things too is we answered back. They scored four to tie it, and then we just pop, pop the, what three runs after that, which kind of I'm sure was deflating to them after they got all excited and tied the game, and then we come back and answer with three runs in the bottom of the fourth. So great job by our guys. Some things we didn't do that we got to do a better job of, which probably we hit it. I thought it was three double plays. I guess we Florida State had four double plays, it says here, but we just didn't do a good job with guys on base there with less than two outs or no outs at third base. We we didn't get them in. We, we should have had some more runs, and that goes for the whole weekend. We just didn't do a good job of that. And going back to Wake Forest, prior to that, we had been doing a good job, but we didn't, haven't lately of getting good at bats, quality at bats from guys if we need a ball hit in the air. The man on third and the infield in, we got to do a better job. Or we need a ground ball hit up the middle because they're giving us a run and we strike out. We just got to do a better job of that. But I don't want to take anything away from our guys. They did one heck of a job um, to sweep, uh, you know, our rival. And, uh, you know, just a huge, huge, huge weekend. About the starters, um, you had mentioned that, obviously, coming yeah. into the series on Vital, you wanted them to give you more length. Yeah. Um, Besides the results, like what did you kind of see that you're most pleased with from the guys that, that look like it could be sustainable going forward, you know, out of this from the start? Well, I think each uh, Alejandro's gotten better and better and better in his starts. If you looked at his starts, I think he's gotten better. Um, I like the fact, you know, Alejandro's a guy. They're all different in their own ways, but uh, Alejandro's a guy when mm -hmm. sometimes adverse, uh, he faces adversity. There's, there, there can be some hiccups there. Well. He, he retired 14 guys after that base clearing triple. He got a little flustered when they called it the, the strike on him. I mean, the ball for 22nd. They called the 22nd clock violation on him. And if you watched him, he got a little upset there. And uh, that's when all this was occurring, by the way. Um, but I think with all the guys, I think I heard Alejandro talking about it. I do think that they did a good job of attacking hitters. I mean, we didn't walk a lot of guys. We walked one guy today and struck out. 11, 14, oof, that's a really good ratio. And Gage was one walk and nine strikeouts maybe yesterday. I think Carson might have had a few more walks, but not a lot, and uh, maybe a few less strikeouts. But just uh, pitching to contact, getting ahead, getting quick outs, that's how you pitch late into the game. That's how you're efficient. So there's no way you can go eight innings and be under 100 pitches like all these guys were. Uh, if you're not getting quick outs and pitching pitch the contact, even though Blake and Alejandro had a lot of strike with Blake, uh, Gage and Alejandro had a lot of strikeouts. That's hard to have, a, when you're striking guys out, you got to throw some pitches now to strike guys out. So that's hard to do that. So that's even more amazing as many strikeouts as they had to still stay under 100 pitches in eight innings. So yeah, just really, really proud of our pitchers. Excellent job and you know, hopefully we can build off this. Coach, what did it mean for you? They actually came in, so they didn't play the midweek, so they did have some extra rest for that bullpen, but you're still able to dig into it. What does it mean, you know, with all the home runs that you've been hitting? Yeah, the home runs have been our kind of our, it seems like that's our way of scoring when I swear hitting a ground ball at the middle is easier than hitting a home run. Or <laughs> hitting a fly ball is easier than hitting a home run in a sack fly. But it seems like we're doing it the hard way. Um, but that has been... I mean, the stat that's crazy that he told me, Josh told me last week, is we've scored, it's probably up to close to 60 now, percent of our runs have been via the home run, by way of the home run. So, um, you know, that's great. You can't defend the home run, so that's always good. But, you know, we got to find ways. It's not always going to be the case, you know. 
Um, and those home runs, I bet you a lot of them have been here. And we've had games, a lot of games where the wind's blowing out. And, you know, it's not always going to be like that. Another ball parks or, you know, facing really good teams with good pitching like Wake Forest. You're going to have to learn to win lower scoring games possibly and um, do situational hitting like we didn't do at Wake Forest. We didn't do this weekend. We did a really bad job of situational hitting. We just happened to hit some home runs and, you know, take advantage of their mistakes. They made some errors and things like that over the weekend. Coach, you talked about obviously the, the starters, an important role by not having to use the bullpen. I mean, how much is that crucial? Because this might be definitely the toughest two weeks you're, you're stretching. No schedule. doubt. You know, we're playing, we got a day off, and then we play on Tuesday. I wish we, you know, we used to be a Wednesday midweek, but some, there's a lot of schools that like Tuesdays better than Wednesdays for different reasons. They want to save their bullpen for the weekend. Coach Morris always liked to have that Tuesday off to practice, uh, not off, Monday's off, but Tuesday practice, kind of get ready playing Wednesday. The thing we're missing is a midweek starter. Because we've lost guys down for the year, we can't, we, we just don't have that. And, you know, um, we need everybody on deck in the bullpen. Because if you use a midweek starter, a fourth guy, he's not, a, he's not in the bullpen. Well, we can't afford to do that and use one of the guys and use him up, which we would not have for the weekend. We need everybody. We didn't have to go to him this weekend, which is great because here we are, we're going to go Tuesday and use quite a few guys in the bullpen. So that's good from that standpoint. Guys will be fresh for that. Um, but, uh, but you're right, we got a, we got a really good stretch coming up here. And, uh, you know, this is, this is big. We've won, what, four in a row now? And uh, I'm going to lose track of our record in the uh, uh, ACC. What are we now? How many games have we played? Eight and four. Eight and four. So I got to think that's kind of right up there right now, sitting in a good position. But Boy, we got some good teams. We got a face coming up. Some really good teams. Anything else for Gino? Okay. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you guys. Thanks, coach. Thank you.